Symmetry of the unit circle and odd and even properties. There is a certain symmetry in the unit circle. This symmetry is where the points ended up being reflected over the x-axis and the y-axis to get similar points with the exception of they would also have negative signs included somewhere else. There are also six specific odd and even properties that help us to explain the symmetry of the unit circle. So the first thing we are going to do is understand what are these properties. These properties will be on your formula sheet, so you don't have to memorize them, but they're kind of handy to keep close. The first one, sine of negative theta, is equal to negative sine of theta. Cosine of negative theta is just going to be equal to cosine of theta. Tangent of negative theta is going to be equal to negative tangent of theta. Cosecant of negative theta is going to be equal to negative cosecant of theta. Secant of theta, or sorry, secant of negative theta is going to equal secant of theta. And cotangent of negative theta is going to equal negative cotangent of theta. So what this means is the cosine and secant functions are even and the others are odd or neither. Okay, so they're odd functions because they're opposite signs. So we're going to use these to solve some problems. For some examples, we're just going to use the unit circle and our knowledge of odd and even properties to solve these problems. So if we have sine of, pi over four, of negative pi over 4, we need to remember that sine of negative theta is equal to negative sine of theta. So what that means is sine of negative pi over 4 is going to equal negative sine of pi over 4. So if you know that, then what is the sine of pi over 4? Well, that's a 45 degree angle, so it's going to be negative square root of 2 over 2. You can verify with your unit circle. So that's your final answer. And the next one here, we have cosine of negative pi over 3. So cosine of negative theta is equal to cosine of theta. So that means cosine of negative pi over 3 is equal to cosine of pi over 3. Now this would be a 60 degree angle and the cosine at a 60 degree angle is 1 half. That is the first term, the x value. So your answer is 1 half. Alright, for this next example, given a couple of trig identities, you want to find another trig identity. Okay, so if cosine of negative x equals 3 fourths and tangent of negative x equals negative 7 square root of 7 over 3, then we want to find sine. So remember that cosine of negative x equals cosine of x, which is going to be equal to 3 fourths. Next one, tangent of negative x is equal to negative tangent of x. So what we're going to get is negative, negative square root of 7 over 3, which obviously is going to simplify to a positive square root of 7 over 3. And that's going to be tangent. If we have cosine and tangent, then we should be able to find sine because tangent of x equals sine over cosine. Now that we have cosine x and tangent of x, we can do that. So I'm going to fill in what I know. Square root of 7 over 3 
equals sine, which we want to find out, of x over cosine of x, which is 3 fourths. So I'm going to invert and multiply. So I'm going to actually have 4 over 3 right here, and that's a 1. Now I want to solve for sine of x, so I'm going to multiply by 3 over 4. So I have square root of 7 over 4 equals sine of x. So that's all you have to do, and that's your final answer. Alright, for the next one, if sine of x equals 0.25, we want to find sine of negative x. Okay, so in this one, I'm going to remember my properties. Negative sine of x equals sine of negative x. So I know that sine of x is 0.25 and negative sine of x is equal to sine of negative x so my answer is negative 0.25 and that's it